This program will deal with applying the Pneumatic Anti-Shock Garment, or PASG, also known as Military Anti-Shock Trousers, or MAS. Application of anti-shock garments should only be done by qualified personnel. In some cases, a doctor's approval must be given. Always follow your local SOP. Pulmonary edema is the only absolute contraindication for the application of anti-shock garments. Physicians may also choose not to order the use of PASG because of congestive heart failure, heart attack, strokes, and pregnancy. There are other situations in which the PASG should only be used under the direction of a physician. These include bleeding into the chest cavity, abdominal injury with evisceration, impelled injury to the abdomen and lower extremities, head injuries, and bleeding above the level of the PASG, which is uncontrolled by direct pressure. If the femur of either leg is fractured, apply a traction splint before putting on the PASG. For training or testing purposes, a mannequin should be used. Under no circumstances should another soldier act as a simulated casualty. We will use a mannequin for our demonstration. First, open the PASG kit and remove the trousers and accessories. Unfold the anti-shock garment and unfasten the Velcro closures. Make sure the trousers are lying flat. It is recommended to lay the trousers on a litter or whatever will be used to transport the casualty. For demonstration purposes, the PASG will be applied using a flat surface. A backboard should be used if the casualty is suspected of having a spinal injury. Unfold the trousers so that the left leg overlaps the right. Ensure that the outside Velcro fasteners face the ground and that the valves are on the outside adjacent to the ground. Remove any sharp objects from the casualty's pants pockets before applying the garment. For demonstration purposes, the casualty in this program will remain clothed. In actual use, as much clothing below the waist as possible should be removed from the casualty. If it is not possible to remove the clothes, then cut away as much clothing as possible. Bulky or restrictive clothing could prevent the PASG from stabilizing the casualty. Lie the trousers out with the leg sections in the same direction as the casualty's legs. The casualty should be placed in a supine position on the trousers. To do this, first, lift the casualty's legs up high enough to slide the trousers underneath. Then slide the trousers under the casualty's legs up to the buttocks. Lift the casualty's buttocks up high enough to slide the trousers underneath then slide them toward the casualty's waist. Do not lift the casualty any higher than necessary when applying the PASG. Position the garment so that the top of the trousers is just below the casualty's lowest rib. If a back injury is suspected, log roll the casualty onto the garment. Now you are ready to wrap the casualty's leg in the garment. Either leg may be wrapped first. We will do the left leg first. If the garment extends below the casualty's foot, Fold the garment back so the garment does not extend beyond the casualty's heel. Wrap the garment around the casualty's leg and smooth the garment down. Align the Velcro strips and press them firmly together to secure the seams of the trouser leg. If the garment has been folded, reinforce the Velcro strips with tape. Repeat this procedure with the other leg.
Now wrap the abdominal section of the garment. Align the Velcro strips and press them firmly together to secure the garment. Attach the foot pump hoses by connecting each short tube on the pump to the leg tube on the trousers using a twisting motion. Then close the stop cock. Connect the long tube on the foot pump of the abdominal section of the garment using a twisting motion. Then close the stop cock. Check the casualty's blood pressure. If the systolic pressure has risen above 90 millimeters of mercury, do not inflate the anti-shock garment. If the systolic pressure is 90 millimeters of mercury or below, inflate the garment. The leg sections of the garment are inflated first. The leg sections may be inflated in either order. We will do the left leg first. Open the stopcock valve on the left leg section by turning the valve knob to the open position. Check the stopcock valve on the right leg section and the stopcock valve on the abdominal section to ensure that they are still closed. Check the casualties pedal or foot pulse and blood pressure while inflating the left leg section. Continue inflating the leg section until one of the following occurs. The casualties vital signs are stable, the air release valve opens, or the Velcro starts to crackle or stretch apart. Note, a loud constant sound coming from the air release valve indicates that the anti-shock garment is overinflated. Stop inflating the garment if this should occur. Close the stop cock valve to the left leg section. Check the casualty's blood pressure. If the systolic pressure has been stabilized, inflation of the right leg section will not be necessary. If the systolic pressure has not been stabilized, open the right stop cock valve and inflate the right leg section using the same procedure as used for the left leg section. If the systolic pressure has stabilized, inflation of the abdominal section will not be necessary. If the casualty systolic pressure still is not stabilized, you will need to inflate the abdominal section of the anti-shock garment. Open the stopcock valve to the abdominal section. Inflate the abdominal section, checking the vital signs as you do so. Close the stopcock valve to the abdominal section. Monitor the casualty's vital signs. If you have not already done so, initiate an IV using Ringer's lactate. Continue to monitor the casualty's blood pressure to ensure it remains stable and evacuate the casualty as soon as possible to a medical treatment facility. If the casualty is to be evacuated by air, it should be done at low altitude and low PSG pressure. The anti-shock garment should not be deflated until the casualty has been evacuated to a medical treatment facility. A physician familiar with the PASG must be present during the deflation process. The pneumatic anti-shock garment can be a life-saving tool for a casualty in severe shock, but it can also kill if applied carelessly or incorrectly. This program was designed to enhance training, not to substitute for it. Under no circumstances should you attempt to apply an anti-shock garment without first receiving hands-on training.